Praxis Prepper. Everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I wanted to catch you guys up on here we are in the middle of the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. I wanted to let you know kind of how my family's been managing bringing things into the house, you know, in terms of bringing groceries in, bringing deliveries in, how we've been working with that. Here's some of the gear behind me that I'm going to be demoing for you guys. Uh, but before I jump into that, I wanted to just you know, be upfront about it. I know a lot of coronavirus stuff has been sort of unfortunately politicized. You know, there are people that believe that they need to keep a certain set of beliefs in relation to coronavirus, or they're gonna they're gonna feel like they're an outsider, they're or they're they're not accepted within whatever political party or affiliation they may have. I think that's kind of foolish that people feel like, you know, I, I, I'm I'm on this team, so I gotta, you know, believe everything that they they're telling me to believe. Uh, for me personally, I just look at the science, I look at the data, and, and I think about my my risk comfort level and I make decisions kind of based on that. Obviously the data is what it is, but we all have a different risk comfort level uh, in terms of you know what types of risk, what level of risk we're willing to take. And uh, we also all uh, have different uh, kind of actual risk levels. You know, there are young people, old people, healthier people, less healthy people. Uh, and you know, for myself personally, I'm not particularly old, I'm reasonably healthy. Uh, the chances of me having a really bad reaction to coronavirus are pretty low. In fact, the only thing that my uh, demographic, you know, youngish, healthy people have to worry about is if we are one of the unlucky people that have a bad reaction to coronavirus and a hospital can't take us in. So now during the, you know, kind of the peak of the second wave, I'm being pretty cautious about things because if something were to happen with myself or anyone in my family and hospitals in my area happen to be overwhelmed that day, that week, you know, that could be bad news for me. Now that may change going into the, the spring and the summer of next year as hospitalizations kind of thin out. You know, my level of uh, comfort with risk might, might very well change because I will know that, well, you know, if I'm one of those unlucky few and I have a bad reaction, you know, the hospitals are very likely not going to be overrun. So I might be changing the way that I'm dealing with this over time. But for right now, in the middle of the second wave, this is where we are. So behind me, uh, there is this box I created on uh, this metal shelf here. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's got cardboard on it. The cardboard has aluminum foil on it. Uh, and it has kind of a ramshackle feel. One of the reasons that I did not create this as a beautiful, you know, permanent piece for the houses, I don't think that this is going to be a problem that's going to be with us for very much longer. Uh, I, I don't know that for sure. That's kind of my suspicion that, you know, with vaccinations rolling out, with lots of people having had it, uh, with doctors getting good at saving people, uh, you know, all those things are going to work together. And I think that this is going to be the worst of it. You know, this early winter 2021, after this, things are going to get better. And maybe this is not something that I'm going to be using for too much longer. So I didn't want to put a lot of effort into it. That said, I want to uh, really emphasize that those are things that I think might be the case. I'm going to continue as we uh, go into you know, the middle of 2021, looking at the data, looking at what's going on. I could be wrong about that. Maybe things will get worse. So just the fact that I said that doesn't mean that that's going to be the way that it is. I'm going to be continuing to look at data as it's coming out and, you know, you'll have an evolving perspective on this as the information uh, evolves. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people feel like you have to stick to an opinion and no matter what new facts come out, that's the opinion you got to stick to because otherwise you'd be wrong and you know no one wants to feel like they're wrong. Um, being wrong is actually pretty awesome because every time you find out that you were wrong, it means you were smarter than you were before you found that out. So nothing wrong with uh, you know finding out new information and finding out that something you thought might have been the case maybe wasn't the case. That's totally fine for me because I don't know whether or not I'm right all the time. I try to play it safe. That's why I'm a prepper. So more about what we have going on in here. Like I said, uh, metal racks, uh, the uh, aluminum foil uh, coated uh, cardboard is all around it. I just took little pieces of tape, made loops on them, stuck the aluminum foil on there, and then did little tape uh, uh, sections over the seams. I did check the aluminum foil with a UVC meter and confirmed that it actually is reflective. Uh, there are uh, certain materials that are transparent to visible light but might be opaque 
to another uh, wavelength of light. So I, I wanted to actually check to make sure whether the aluminum foil, which to visible light looks very reflective to us, I wanted to check whether it was actually visible at the UVC spectrum uh, wavelength, and it is, so that's good to know. Uh, the lights that I have in here, and by the way, all the uh, things that I'm talking about in this video other than aluminum foil, everyone can get aluminum foil, but all the specialty things, I'm gonna put links down in the description below so you'll have an easy way of picking these up uh, because uh, not every UVC light is created equal. These are really good ones. Uh, I've tested these out. These really uh, kick out a lot of UVC light. They really irradiate whatever you're trying to irradiate. There are a lot of LED UVC lights that are quite frankly garbage. They're, they're not worth anything. Sure, they send out a little bit of of UVC light, uh, but so does the sun. A lot of the uh, LED lights that I see are only slightly more effective than just leaving whatever you have out in the sunlight. So, you know, if you're gonna, if you want to sterilize stuff, it's a lot cheaper, just leave it out in the sun. Uh, but these guys, much more powerful, powerful than the sun. I've got six of them, two on either side, two in the middle. And when this box closes up like this, it really wraps every surface of whatever I've put in there with UVC light. So let's, let's kind of demo how uh, this process works because the process is just as, if not more important than the equipment that we're using. You'll notice there's a window here. The window's open. Uh, there's gonna be uh, ozone generated by these lights. We want to let that ozone out of here. We also want any particulates uh, that get kicked up during this process to you know, dissipate as quickly as possible. Uh, I'm gonna be demoing this with uh, some products uh, that I have here. These have already been sterilized, but if they were uh, not sterilized, I'd be doing a mask over my mouth while I was doing it. You know, as a, if you get back from the grocery store, you got bags, you're rummaging through the bags, you're kicking stuff up and you don't wanna be breathing that stuff in. You are safe all the time at the store. You don't wanna breathe it in at the end. But uh, for the purpose of this video, I put a mask on. You can't really see my lips. You can't hear me as well. So. Imagine that I have the mask on as I'm going through all this stuff. The other thing I want to note is that this rack is right next to the front door here. I'm in a uh, attached greenhouse that we have on the house. Uh, so we can kind of clean things off in here before we move in. If it's raining, we have the space to use. So it's nice. So when we get back you know, from grocery shopping, whatever the conditions are outside, whether it's dark or raining or snowing or whatever, we can work in here and you know, we're not going to be in the house. So we're not trampling. Uh, potential coronavirus into the house, but we're also not completely out and exposed to the elements. Also right next to the door, and this is pretty important, independent of everything else that we're talking about, about sterilizing stuff, I have hand sanitizer. So whenever uh, you know, I, I get back, I can sanitize my hands right at the door. If someone comes to the house and they use the door handles, I got the hand sanitizer right there so I can sterilize the, the door handles. It's handy to have one of these big jugs of it right next to your door. We've got two doors on the house and I've got two uh, things of hand sanitizer next to them. So the way this thing uh, is set up, all these lights are all running to a power strip that's down here. And also right down here, you'll notice that there's a little box. This is a small UVC light uh, sterilization box. I purchased this at the beginning of the uh, coronavirus pandemic. And you might think, well, why do you even have that anymore? You've got this huge thing. Well, a lot of times you don't want to sterilize something big. It might just be your phone or your wallet or you know some mail or something like that. Or you know you used a knife to open up some packages or something like that, uh, and you know you don't want to cook with this whole thing. This creates a lot of ozone. Use a lot more electricity if you're into saving electricity. So and since I have it, I just keep it down there so I can use that for small things if I don't need to use this this whole deal. So uh, once I've got it opened up, uh, again, I said it, there's a process here and the process works best with two people. Uh, there's usually a dirty hands person and a clean hands person. I usually am the dirty hands person. I am bring the things in from the car. I put the bags down here and I take out of the bags anything that's in them. And I put the stuff in here, kind of spaced out. You don't want to have shadows. Now the uh, uh, aluminum foil helps to reflect light everywhere. But you know, if you've got two objects that are you know, stuck right up against each other, or there's even just a tiny little gap, you're not necessarily going to get any light in there and you're not going to sterilize it at all. So you want to have plenty of little bits of airspace around everything. I think that's about all I'm going to do on this. So the last thing I've got here is this box and I don't really have a great space for it. I, I could possibly kind of fit it in there. Actually, yeah, I think that would work. But the point is, you don't want to overload this thing because if you overload it, you're going to get shadows and then it's not going to do its job. Uh, at this point, I'm going to close this. I'm the dirty hands guy, so I just made this dirty. I just made the stick dirty, closing it down. As I do that, I feel a rush of air on my face. 
That's the, again, good, uh, good reason to have the mask. Now that this is closed, I can turn it on right down here, flip the switch. I leave it on for 30 seconds with that number of lights in there. Again, links down in the description to these particular lights because if you have a weaker light, you're going to need to do it longer. If the light is half the strength, you want to do it for twice the time. These lights can do everything in there. 30 seconds is totally fine for that. So then I would turn the, that off. And now it's almost the end of my roll. The last thing I need to do is just open this up, prop it open. And at this point, I just step back because Amber would be with me. She's the clean hands person. She comes in and she grabs everything, uh, puts it into a clean bag or a clean box, brings it into the house, and then we repeat the process. Now you'll notice that I've got this entire rack here and I've only done the top two shelves of it. You know, I, I could have you know, covered the entire thing in aluminum foil boards and uh, done it that way. And that is what I did at the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic. We had a whole shelf, why not use the whole shelf, put lights all over it, you know, wrapped it all up. But what I found was with having two people, uh, you know, it would take me a while to load the whole thing up and Amber's just sitting there idle, not doing anything. And then after that, uh, once everything's sterilized, it would take Amber a while to dump the whole thing and get everything out of there. And I'm sitting idle. So we kind of found out that it, you don't really need to have a huge amount of space. You just kind of do a little bit. That's like enough space for kind of like a grocery bag, these two shelves. Uh, and that way there's less idle time. You know, people can kind of keep moving and doing whatever they're doing. And also I use the lower shelves for grocery bags, which we also should sterilize. Uh, you know, after you get back, you know, you get everything sterilized, you know, take the bags, throw the bags in there as well. You're not gonna necessarily get the inside of the bag, but at least you'll sterilize the outside surface so it's not sitting, you know, in your house with the, you know, the outside surface all dirty. Uh, and I also have the small sterilizer on there. So that's where we are at this point. And like I said, this is an all evolving situation and our, our perspective on it should evolve over time. The, again, the idea of having one idea at the beginning of a situation and then having your, uh, your perspective and your reaction to it adapt and evolve as new information comes out, that's not only okay, that's the way it should be uh, you know it, the idea that we should all expect to instantly have the uh, the right answer or, or know everything about something when it's a new and evolving situation is just childish to be honest you really uh, are should always be learning and the idea that you you know are smarter today than you were yesterday because you learned something that's not a bad thing that's a good thing so good luck through the rest of this uh, uh, coronavirus you know, situation. I hope I'm right that, you know, going into the middle of 2021, things start uh, lightening up and we can all kind of get back to something closer to what we felt was normal. I could be wrong about that though. So pay attention to the information coming out, pay attention to the data and try to get it as direct from the source as you can, as opposed to through all the political filters that are telling you what to think and then trying to reverse engineer why you should think it. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community, both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.